Hey, I want to tell you about one of our sponsors, Cyto Detox. Look, podcasts cost money. There's a lot of production uh, going around this, but uh, we are grateful to have Cyto Detox as one of the sponsors. It's so easy for me to talk about the product because myself and my family use it constantly as we practice what I preach for over 15 years. I've talked about and taught doctors and the public about cellular detox. And I'll tell you, Cyto was a breakthrough. Cyto was a breakthrough for us. Um, and it's changed so many lives. So we're grateful that they sponsor Cellular Healing TV. It makes sense, doesn't it? They should. If you're listening to this podcast and want to access the amazing Cyto Detox product Dr. Pompa just mentioned, please visit detoxoffer.com. Again, that's detoxoffer.com. On this episode, you're going to meet my friend Tara Garrison, who wrote a book, Short-Term Keto. Oh, it sounds like a concept that you've heard before, but but there's some surprises. Uh, we also get into exercise variation. One thing, she did amazing. She did more than one thing. But on this show, she gives you the plan and how to know where your, what she calls unique carb threshold is. She talks about that and she talks about what she did that changed her. Wait till you see, the show starts off with her double bicep. Yeah, check it out. Wait till you see the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cellular Healing TV. I'm Ashley Smith, and today we welcome holistic health coach Tara Garrison. Tara is here to dive into the ketogenic diet with Dr. Pompa today. She'll explain why she doesn't promote keto long term, why she promotes diet variation, how keto impacts neurotransmitters, why carbs don't make you fat, and why weight training is so important for metabolism and longevity. We always love all of these topics. So let's get started and welcome Tara Garrison and of course, Dr. Pomp out of the show. Welcome both of you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Wow. Well, gosh, you know, Tara, I, I would really embarrass you. Maybe I will. You know what? Give us a double bicep. You know? <laughs> see the shape. Right, let's see. Look at that. <laughs> that, is, that was even better than I expected. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's, uh, this girl is not only in great shape. And she, <laughs> He's a trainer. We're going to talk about exercise variation too. I'm going to make her talk about that. She's a coach to many. Uh, we'll give you an opportunity to hire her. Maybe you will. Um, but I'll tell you, uh, she's a healthy person as well. All right. I mean, I say that because a lot of the, the you know, the right. people, they're not healthy, right? And nope. they fall apart later. That's not you. You're healthy. Nope. Wrote a book yeah. Book. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, anyways, let me start with that. Let, let me start with, tell me your story, right? I mean, so you're hot to get here. You're you're devoted to the diet. You're devoted to the exercise. That just doesn't happen because it happens. How'd you get? Yeah, there? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it started through trauma. <laughs> Usually, there's hard, low moments that get us all to change, right? And so, of for me, oh man, I you know I'm grateful for my path because I can resonate with people and and diff, so many different places on their journey. But for me, yeah. I was always overweight. You know, the typical. I feel like most of us that grew, I was born in 1982, it was just standard American, everything, you know, and I was chubby, overweight, um, towards, I was married for 13 years and towards the end of that marriage. I, I would love to see a picture of the chubby you, because mm. I've known you since the day I met you, you were, right? so I can imagine the chubby Tara. I, I no, I, yeah, I always. I mean, I was probably pushing 40% body fat, like when I started my journey and I was, I was a runner, right? So I was like, kind of that, how Mark Sisson talks about the chronic cardio, mm -hmm. I was that. Right. And yeah. just eating standard yeah. American diet. And then I, I ha had a wound. I, I developed this story that wasn't true, that part of the reason for the crumbling of my marriage was that my body wasn't enough. Right. And it <laughs> totally was not true, but man, it lit a fire under me. And I learned that you can get really motivated out of fear, but it doesn't land you. You never, you're always there. You're always in fear. So I, I mean, I really achieved. I've always been an overachiever. I got to 11% body fat. I qualify for the Boston marathon. I was kind of living that bodybuilder lifestyle that you're talking about where it's yeah. literally the only focus is body composition, right? So uh, by the way, that's why I drew the contrast of you immediately. You know, yeah. like when people see how fit you are, like even me, I put people into a category of I know. probably doing everything wrong and not healthy. It's not you. 
Right. And so it was, you know, it was still a step forward for me because I built muscle. I was eating more whole foods and less processed garbage, but it was still the only mentality was like build muscle and lean out. Like I hadn't quite gotten into the health optimization side of things and the cellular health and understanding the systems of my body and all that. And I went through a simultaneous like healing journey. I really did getting into health optimization, also doing a lot of deep spiritual work. And I'm happy to say that now it's, it's just joy. Like when people see, I have biceps and stuff, they're like, wow, that's a lot of hard work. And I'm like, kind of, um, I don't really feel that way because I'm just enjoying, I'm enjoying it so much. And so I'm grateful for the hard path. I'm grateful for being overweight and feeling like I couldn't figure it out and all of that stuff. I'm grateful for becoming that exactly what you're talking about. The obsessed, you know, body composition obsessed. This is all that matters and feeling what that feels like, what happens inside your mind, the choices you make, and then coming through a huge healing journey and being in such a wonderful place with my body where now eating healthy is joy. It's like, here you go cells. You guys are going to love this. Um, and working out is just, it's literally to me, feels like having a the sweetest car that you could ever imagine because our bodies truly are that like better than any McLaren or Ferrari or either they're, they're garbage compared right. to the human body. And so now I'm just seeing what this baby can do and yeah, it's fun. Awesome. So grateful for the whole path. It's great. But see, it all started here first, right? You had to change your mindset about your body and everything. Right. And, and, yes. and you did that for sure. Uh, yeah, you know, this, uh, the book, I have to say this, you know, short-term keto, people could tell right by the title that you and I agree that you don't just stay in keto forever. It can be problematic. And I want to hear your take on that, but this is a premise that I've put out there for many, many, many years that not everybody in our space shares. That's probably why you're on the show, Uh, (laughs) because you share that, um, how you got there. I want to hear because you probably have your story. But um, I'll tell you that, you know, I've been not invited back to many seminars, yep. uh, low carb USA being one of them, because that I'm telling people, wait a minute, low carb too long, keto too long is yeah. there's problems with that. And they didn't like my message. How did you land here? So I had gotten to a place towards the end of that whole getting really lean and that's all that matters and building muscle and all that. I had gotten to a, a good place with food towards the end of that. I was like not tracking anything. I was just eating whole foods from nature, just enjoying. And then I got introduced to keto and I was very attracted to keto from like the brain, the mental, the biohacker side of myself. Where I was like, Hmm. And it made sense to me. So I dropped into keto for all of 2017. I ran the Boston marathon in ketosis. I started really diving deep into that world and started coaching people through keto and all of those things. And by 2018, you know, after towards the beginning of 2018, I was just like, I am just not feeling great. And I'm noticing that I am really hungry at the end of my meals. I never feel satiated. All of a sudden now I'm like, eating like a thousand calories worth of nut butters and keto bars at the end of my meals, because I don't feel satiated when I know if I could just have some strawberries or an apple or something, I'd be good and and go along my merry way. And I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to start. I I want to be clear though. In the beginning, it was like, I feel amazing. 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 Like I am a superhuman. I see everything. (laughs) Like I could tell when I kicked into ketosis because I just, it's like like mental clarity. Yeah. 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 So really awesome for a while. But after so long, I was just like, gosh, I'm just not feeling that great. And when I brought those cars back in, I mean, so I personally, and I wrote this in the intro of my book, I actually, even with optimizing, I was dating a guy at the time that was highly specialized in keto. And even with my knowledge and his knowledge, I was still losing muscle mass and gaining body fat which I was okay with. But after a certain point, that trend kept going that way. I gained 10 pounds. This is DEXA scan, 10 solid pounds of body fat in four months yeah. while I was keto. I was like, I don't know if I want to keep that trend going and losing muscle mass right. after bringing carbs back in within nine months. I, so I got up to 18% body fat. I dropped down without tracking food or trying just being explosive in my workouts. Again, feeling satiated at the end of meals. I dropped back down to 13% body fat within yeah. nine months, just, just eating the whole yeah. food for me. Again, again. I, I want to be clear. I mean, she wrote a book, short-term keto, right? We're strong believers in keto, but yeah, I love know, keto. the same thing happened to Joe Mercola. I was at a cancer conference in uh, Orlando and he said, Dan, I, 
you know, I'm, I'm 10 grams of carbs a day. It's like, and I feel like I'm getting weaker in the gym. Exactly. What you yep. said I'm getting fatter and I'm losing muscle. Why? I yep. said, here's why Joe, and here's what you need to do. And, you know, it was hard. I'm sure for Joe, because he's so disciplined, but you know, I said, you need feast days, you need carbs, yep. high carb days. And, you know, and then I, I got him to transform and it was an email. He sent me like, you were right. It worked. You know, yeah. it's like, so we may take criticism in this space because people are so like, they're, they're about their diet, right? Paleo people, keto people, now it's carnivore right. people. And then you have your plant-based people. And I preached variation is the magic. You proved it, right? Joe proved it. I could keep going. Erin yeah. Smith, who's been on the show with her story, exact same story. She started gaining weight the more strict she became in keto. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I loved the first time I met you, we had this conversation and I was like, thank God about diet variation. And I, what I, what I appreciate about you always is you're willing to question yourself. And what if I'm wrong about this? Let me dive into what if I'm wrong? And that's what keeps you on the cutting edge in the health industry. I truly believe that because you're willing to question your belief systems instead of becoming dogmatic and stuck in this one way of thinking. And if, I mean, any, the nature of any scientist, anyone yeah, who's in science, there's something I'm wrong about right now, something, I just got to figure it out. Right. But right. I mean, that's always the mindset I'm coming from. It's like, you know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe I'm yes. about that. Isn't wrong. it fun? Isn't it fun? <laughs> it's it so is. fun. Um, yeah. So, you know, and then what happened more and more in my little catch line that I do, you know, it's, it's do keto, not forever because holy cow, the ketogenic diet is powerful, especially for obese people, high blood sugar. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it is just like a machete. It's just like, let's get the job done. You're going to feel amazing. You're going to get rid of all these cravings. You're to drop body fat. But for me coming from 11% body fat and already being having healthy blood sugar regulation and being extremely active in the gym, I don't know that I needed to do keto for a full year to get the benefits. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You know, and your genetics will determine kind of when you go poop on it, you know, it's like, totally. you know, it's like some people could go three years. I, you know, it's right. like, but yes. you know, seeing that their body's compensating, 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 and not necessarily that it was good that they went that long. But, you know, I make the same argument for plant-based people or vegans or vet. it's like genetics will determine when that particular diet goes south on you too. So we're not just picking on keto here. Right. Uh, we're talking about the benefits of keto, just not too long. The benefits of plant-based diet, not too long. The, the yep. benefits of perhaps yep. a vegan diet, not too long. Right. Yes. I mean, it's like, that's the thing is I want everybody to hear that. So I have a client right now who was vegan had, I mean, you can imagine what's going to happen as I tell you what's next. She had autoimmune issues, gut issues, all these things getting progressively worse. She went carnivore. Wow. Healed, got rid of all these food sensitivities. Like everything went amazing. But after time in carnivore, things started going down again and she started having all these cravings oh, right. and just wasn't feeling as good. And we brought carbs back in and she's like, Whoa, she's sending me all these pictures because of course her muscles are now filled with glycogen. She's like, I feel amazing. My cravings are gone. My workouts are up. I've got all this definition in my legs. Wow. And it's that's diet variation in a nutshell. It's like for a time, certain extremes can be extremely healing and impacting to the body. But I always say, while one thing is getting upregulated in the body in an extreme, something else is getting downregulated. You know. So yeah, that, that's no, there is no doubt about that, right? Yeah. That's exactly what happens. You know, there's something called uh, four hydroxyneneline uh, that basically will raise um, after a period of time on a low carb diet, and this is what the plant based people pick on about low carb keto or carnivore. The, the diets cause cancer because of the rise of this. Well, long-term keto, yes, you'll get 4 hydroxyneneline rise up, but on the short term, it's absolutely incredible because you know the body adapts to this state, right? Exactly. It's like if people get symptoms maybe the first week because it's, they're in this, they're burning fat and the oxidation of fat will cause a little more free radicals. And then the body builds up glutathione and all these amazing things happen and you feel amazing. But then this four hydroxyneneline could build up and then create problems over time. So yes, long term on a you know carnivore diet, keto diet can cause cancer, but not in the short term. It's amazing. Yeah. But yeah. same with the plant based diets. In the beginning, people were amazed, and all the people that you mentioned, I promise you that when she went, the gal you were speaking of, into her you know vegan diet, 
I promise you, she felt great in the beginning. At first, yeah. She didn't, right? And yep. that's why people hold on to their diet, man, because in the beginning, they feel amazing. They don't correlate a year later going, I'm just not feeling bad. They think it's something else. I'm sure you went through that too. Totally. I'm sure, wait, I'm gaining weight. It must be something else. It must be something else, right? Well, and I mean, imagine I've worked with people who have lost over a hundred pounds on keto. Their whole yeah. life got changed. Yeah from getting rid of carbohydrates. So what's going to happen in your mind as a result of that? Those things ruined my life. I never eating them again. Never again. Never right? again. And I have to go through this huge mindset journey with them of you're not in the same body anymore. It, and, you know, and even just anyone who's been obese, there's kind of this running from fear of going back to that place. And right. it's like, there's a healing, honestly, that has to happen. Yeah. You're not in that body anymore. Congratulations. Like feel where you're at now. Okay. Now you have a healthy body fat. You have muscle. You're crushing it in the gym. There are certain ways you can feed your body now that you couldn't before and get the no. same results. You know, and that's a great example because I think there becomes the fear then of carbohydrates, never eat them again, never will. And here's what people say to themselves. I don't do good with carbs. Yes. <laughs> now, and then the, let's flip it now. The person that got away from meat, right? Mm -hmm. I don't do good with meat. Meat right. is bad. I'll never eat it again. And now all of a sudden they're deficient with the things about meat. So, you know, again, it's not one versus the other. I, I know, I believe that our genetics are set up for diet variation. Yes. I mean, if you look at nature, it's just obvious, right? And we forget how adaptable this machine is. Obviously, I used to not have biceps like this, right? So it adapts and adapts and adapts. And I, you know, just to like really support the diet variation message, that's just how I live now. And it's very freeing. You know, I'm not sitting here tracking my food or in locked into some system. I really go the feast and famine route. Some days I intermittent fast, like in a really small window. Some days I'm eating in a longer window. Sometimes I'm eating higher and, have, carb, and, but... and just to point out uh we can give the link to your book because you have your strategies in the book and you have yes. a, a four a four week plan finding your unique, unique carb threshold and by the way i think that's a really good point because i think we all do have a little bit of different carb threshold however i believe we all need carbs rotate you can I'm, when i say need carbs i believe you can go carnivore for months <laughs> no, no carbs at all and fine but the variation is what we all absolutely do need and I, I think your plans there. Where do they get the book? Thank you. On Amazon is probably the best place to get it. Just short-term keto, or you can go to shorttermketo.com and we have a freebie there in case you want to go through a phase of keto because the book is showing you how to reintroduce carbs and match your training to that threshold of carbohydrates. And really my point in doing it that way is I really just want to turn people back into their bodies and feeling, how do I feel when I eat this way? Okay. And granted that might change you 10 years from now, it's going to be different two years from now. It's probably Probably going to be different sleep, stress, lifestyle, all of it, you know, your age even. So just, I'm really trying to help people key back into their bodies and saying, Hmm, when I put this in my body, I feel this way noted when I match my training this way to my food, I feel this way. Right. So it's just a lot of, I'm all constantly in my coaching, trying to turn people back inside of themselves, because when you become intuitive like that, and I know you're that way, you have to be, yeah. you've gone through so much with your body. You've, I'm sure you've become very intuitive with it. Right. And so that's what I'm constantly trying to help people yeah. do. But most people, I mean, again, I, that's come with time, right? I mean, I'm intuitive Fine. with it, yep. but most people are like, they're not, they need the four week plan. Yes. Right. I mean, they just, totally. you know, and I, I love how you brought, bring it in with the exercise because that's the other component, right. Is <laughs> people want both. Right. So let's, let's now have that conversation, right. We yes. both know that yeah. exercise variation is the same. If you go to the gym, and you do the same thing, which people tend to do, right? We're all human. We tend to eat the same eight foods. We tend to do the same, you know, eight exercises. And yet we know that not only we plateau, but results actually start diminishing, just like diet. It actually becomes bad for you, which was good for you. When you first start in the gym, I don't right. care what you do. You know, you can do jumping jacks and some push-ups, and you're going to be like, wow, I feel so much better until it doesn't work anymore because it's not creating a stress that your body has to adapt to, hormesis. Yeah. Talk about it. Sure. Yeah. So in the bodybuilding world, they call it newbie gains, right? The first couple of years you get what they call newbie gains. Everybody knows about newbie gains. So think about this logically. 
why are you getting newbie gains? Why are you getting such better results in that first year or two? Because it's a new stressor, like you just said. So if we can just apply that, like take that principle and say, okay, I stopped getting my newbie gains. Now I need to change something. And this goes back into alignment with what we were talking about earlier of not being so dogmatically stuck. And I know this works for me, right? We get so caught in this, this works for me. Guess what? A lot of things will work for you, but it's gotta be something new. If you want a different result, same stimulus, same response. Like <laughs> here's the mistake people make. They think if just, if they're just exercising, Right, they're doing the, you know, they're going to get the result. It's not the exercise; it's the stress you create yes. through the exercise. Yes. But it's your body's adaptation to the stress that makes you better. So, if the body doesn't think it's a stress anymore, then it doesn't adapt anymore, and you don't get the benefits of the hormone optimization and the result. Yes, we are so aligned. I always say, get the stimulus and get out. Exercise, and especially, sorry, ladies, but women are like, some men too, but a lot of women are really stuck in this mentality of exercise is how I burn off calories, right? right. So it's all this cardio or workout. It's not content. calories in, calories out. It's not exercise, burn, exercise, not burn. It's not. I'm like, I look sometimes in the, and while yes, Zumba is really fun. And some, if you're doing, it's great to move and have fun and have community and all that. But if you're seeking body composition change and you're going in there, just driving your body at this kind of like low to medium intensity for an hour, as you're only exercise, you're just making it so hard on yourself because the magic happens when you create a stressor that your body now has to adapt to. And then you start to make it easier on your body. Like you can have rest. I'm like sitting out there, like pushing hard for a set and standing there while they're jumping around and doing all these things. And I'm like, mm -mm. this could be so much easier, right? But you have to be willing to push yourself to a certain intensity level in order to create, it has to be a stressor enough. To and, and by the level. way, I mean, you know, good athletes, good trainers, they know this, right? That this, you create the stress by changing intensity, whereas yeah. long could be a stress to your body, long, easy. Whereas high short could be a stress to high reps, low rep, everything you change becomes a stress. Yes. That's why, but most people are doing the same amount of reps, same amount of intensity, right. and whether it's high intensity every time, just as bad as low intensity every time, right? You have to, you yep. have to change yep. it all. And by yes. the way, I want to say this, you know, the key to staying fit and healthy is the hormone optimization created by the adaptation it. stress that's it <laughs> so that's in it in a nutshell so boom, boom. Weight, <laughs> yeah, it's not about exercise you do not lose weight because of exercise you lose weight because of the hormone optimization created by the exercise and by the way same with the diet you, yeah. it's the hormone optimization created by the diet change not the yes. diet that is the key here so. yes amen you know and i i will say like Sometimes people will be like, you know, I, I feel like I have a lot of energy during the day and people will say, this is just another plea for exercise. Cause I find like sometimes exercise get, you know, people will be like, I lost so much weight and I didn't even exercise. And I'm like, okay, but that's not all it's about though. It's not just about weight. We get so locked into this, like exercise yeah. is only for like fat loss or weight maintenance. Ugh, it's, oh, so listen, at my age, it, it's, it's more to do with healthy joints and, you right. know, and just how I feel. And it has anything to do with, with weight. I, it, my diet is everything with, as far as that. And I knew that even right. when I was younger. And, and in terms of energy, think of it this way. This is how I look at it. Cause I feel like I have pretty nonstop energy levels throughout the day. I don't get afternoon lows. It's very rare unless maybe I had some big trip with my kids and it's, I drove home all day, you know, I might get tired. But other than that, it's like pretty steady energy all day, every day. And this is how I look at it. I'm like, if I can go in the gym and I can rip to shreds a hit workout where I'm really pushing myself for 20 minutes, or I can do a heavy lifting session, or I could run three miles. And that's pretty effortless for me. Walking around all day doing daily lifestyle stuff is really easy. And I love to spread that message. Just like if I could deadlift 200 pounds, like nobody's business, do you think picking stuff off, off the floor is like anything to me, it's like nothing. But if you're never exercising and you're never getting stronger, think how much harder your daily day-to-day -day life is because you just don't have the strength to make it easy, right? So that's another push for exercise that I love to like share that's with you. And you know, look, I mean, the older you get, it's the stupid little things that uh, will injure you when you're not conditioned. And I have to say this, that most people are exercising or actually creating more room because they don't change they don't vary they actually end up 
uh, increasing the risk of injury more so than decreasing it. Oh, Exercise yeah. variation is the key because that's what happens in your day. So the more you change up your exercise and vary it, the less chance of injury. And let me tell you, the older you get, that becomes more important. <laughs> yeah. And last, on that note, oh my gosh, if I can just spread this to the universe, chiropractors, which obviously I know you'll appreciate this message, but like go in, take care of your body with equal measure that you're, you know, pushing it, doing all this work. Like if you're having little issues, like I can't feel this activating, or I can't bend my arm back without it hurting or whatever, you don't have to live like that. It's yeah. so affordable. You can make it happen. Go and do sports massage therapy and chiropractors. I love the combo of like a sports massage therapist in a chiropractor's office and a chiropractor because the sports massage therapist is doing like the neuromuscular stuff and this, the chiropractor is doing like the neurostructural type stuff and that combo together. Holy cow. You start taking care of your body like that, eating good food and then pushing yourself where you really can, because everything is functioning like a symphony together in your body. It's pretty awesome. That's where I'm living right now. I've got my appointment tomorrow, you know, <laughs> with my chiropractor and sports massage therapist. And like that triple threat of good food, switching it up. I mean, I'll throw in sleep because that's a big one too. Um, taking care of your body and pushing it, getting those hormonal stressors. Your body just becomes so resilient and happy and thriving. It's a great yeah, way. Because, to I mean, again, when you look at how does the body adapt to the stress of exercise or diet change, it is a hormone optimization. And yes. again, what do I see today, especially in this space, is everyone trying to optimize hormones by taking hormones. Yeah. And the analogy that I give, that's like trying to make your kids better by yelling at your kids constantly, meaning there's a time to yell at them, right? Not the point. But when you're yelling at them constantly, they don't even hear you anymore, no. right? So taking hormones, your cells are just like, I don't hear you anymore. And now taking more and more and more, it's shut down, right? It's not how it works, right? You right. have to get your kids to hear you, right? You have to yeah. get your cells to hear your hormones. And that is how hormone optimization comes in. It's optimizing the cell's ability to hear your thyroid hormone, to hear mm -hmm. a hormone called leptin that makes you fat burner and tells you to stop eating and use your fat as energy. Your cells have to hear that. But when we talk about diet change, that's what it creates. When we talk about exercise change, that's what it creates. Yes. So it's all hormone optimization. I love that analogy. Yes. If you're, you know, kind of reaming at your kids and then all of a sudden you bring it really quiet. Guess what? They're going to listen. They're going to hear that change. They're like, what's that? That's <laughs> different. Why, why is she being so quiet? <laughs> right, I'm going to listen to you now because I'm not just tuning out this blaring. Right. Yeah. But I mean, look, there, there's a time and a place uh, to take a bioidentical hormone, right? But the fact is, is right, it, right. it's now the in vogue thing. Yes. And I'll tell you, it just like diet, it doesn't work long-term. This is the most common thing I run into as a coach when people come to me and they're exasperated is keto is not working. I need to keto harder. Um, this exercise thing I'm doing, I need, I mean, people are, they're ultra marathoners now because the marathons weren't working anymore. I need to, I need to do the same thing more, harder, longer. And it's like, if you can just yeah. Listen, to just switch it up. Listen to your soul. I t promise you, if you will like tap in and ask your body what it needs and it's telling you some different thing, like go to yoga and you're like, eh, I don't want to go to yoga because I like going and lifting my bench press really hard every day. And you'll just listen to it. Holy cow. Like that's where all the magic happens. And I can't tell you how many clients I've been like, that I've been like, I cannot believe I'm working out less in eating more and not stressing about my food so much. And it finally worked. Are you kidding me? And I'm like, yeah. So yeah, it's not harder, longer, more, more, more. It's change, 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 change. That's it. That's it. And, and folks, I've done the, the premise, the science behind it. It's called hormesis. Yeah. I've done other shows on it. I'll have Ashley put it in there. If you want more science that we know what the heck we're talking about here. Um, but you know, it, it is, it is hard to, to change that person. It, it's the same reason why caloric restriction gets a hold of people. And it's because they cut their calories and they lose 10 pounds or 15 pounds. Right. So right. then it begins, then they stop. And then it's like, okay, I'm still not where I want. So of course it makes sense then to cut more calories right. and you cut more calories and then you kind of lose a little bit more, maybe not as much as the first time. And then you do it again. And all of a sudden you're not losing weight. 
And then it's what, you know, let me do more. And now all of a sudden you have cut your calories so far down that you're, you don't even look normal anymore. You're unhealthy. You didn't even realize that the lights were being dim. Your metabolism is going down to the point where you're eating salad only and you're not losing weight. And matter of fact, you're losing muscle and gaining fat. So of course, now you have an eating disorder. Now you have this yeah. problem. Now, yeah. You see how people get there. It's human. Right. But, right. This, but we're doing the same thing with the keto diet, the paleo diet, the carnivore diet, the vegan diet, the vegetarian diet, whatever it is, stop. We're doing it with our exercise routine. The, the magic is in the change in the stress that it creates and the ultimately the hormone optimization that you need to adapt to the stress. Yes. And I always like to tell people too, like if you're in the flow where it's really working, you're feeling awesome. Like let's take somebody who has high blood sugar and they're obese and they've just started keto. If you're listening to this right now and it's working and for the first time in your life, you're not having insane food cravings all the time and you're actually dropping body fat and you feel good mentally, keep going while you're in the flow. I give a bunch of biofeedback in the book of things to look for, but one of the biggest things is you just, you're not losing any weight anymore. You're not feeling good anymore. You're starting to almost like binge eat and stuff. Those are some big hitters in yeah, keto. So you, you give the signs of what to look for, right? You know. Yes. There's a whole, there's a whole list in the book, but you know, and that was one of the reasons I started speaking up about short-term keto is because I, I was at KetoCon in 2018 and three different, I felt, I took it as a sign from the universe. I was like, this is really weird. I had three different women come up to me. They were like very similar, perimenopausal, overweight, said, Hey girl, like I cannot figure this out. I have not eaten a carb in like two years, three years, a year, whatever. I've tried more fat, less fat, more protein, low, less protein, uh, lifting weights, not lifting weights, walking all these things. And when I said to each one of them, I said, have you tried reintroducing carbohydrates? And they looked at me like deer in headlights. Like I had sworn in church, you know, <laughs> they were like, what did you just say? And I was like, okay, this is not okay. We've got to talk about being open-minded to changing it up when things are not working anymore. Right. So you'll know when that time comes, it's just this uh, all now, everything. I hard. love that. I yeah. love that you give those signs and warnings in the book because that's a question I get all the time is, well, how do I know when to switch things up, right? And I've always given weekly strategies, monthly strategies, seasonal strategies, you know? And the other thing people are gonna love about your book, by the way, is uh, the zillion of amazing recipes, um, by Thank the way. You. I mean, I, I'm sure you got them from a bunch of people in our space and I'm sure a bunch of them are yours, but uh, they're they're amazing. So I think- They're they're all they're all ours. Mine and my, my sister and I all developed, she's a keto coach as well. Amazing. She's, yeah, yeah we developed those together. I, I, that's hard to believe. But anyway, <laughs> I, I want to, I'm going to share my screen on something uh, and I want to get your comments on this because as we're having this conversation, this is also an appropriate conversation. I mean, I have taught fasting for many, many years and, and I found myself years ago, always having to convince people that fasting was safe, effective, and they needed it. Now the conversation has shifted to where I'm telling people, especially in our, in our space and in our conferences, the feast is as important as the fast, because now we have a group of people who are fasting too much and it's working against them. So as we have this conversation about diet, okay, um, so this weekend I was speaking at um, uh, Paleo FX, right? And so this came up and let me show you, let me screen share. This was a conversation that came up. All right. Can you see up? Mm -hmm. All right. So you see uh, this particular slide. Let me just blow it up bigger. All right. Now you can see it better, right? Yes. Okay. Science, scientists find no benefit from time-restricted eating. Uh, just so you know, time restricted eating, AKA intermittent fasting daily. Okay. So everyone's in an uproar because this was a long term study. If you see here, it says, um, but now a rigorous one year study in which people followed a low calorie diet between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Okay. So they were basically eating in that window from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. That was their eating window and fasting the rest from 4 p.m all the way until the next morning at 8 a.m. Okay, so very typical. Some people skip breakfast and do their eating window later, but they chose that eating window. They compared it to a group that consumed the same number of calories any time during the day, meaning that they could just, you know, same number of calories, let's make up a number, 2,000 calories 
And you know, one group was doing it in this window and the other group was just doing it throughout the day, okay? Both basically same result and therefore the, the study was intermittent fasting had no benefit, okay? Now, we both look at that and go, well, one of the problems was is that they did low calorie and they did it for in a window or not, but low calorie long-term yeah. over a year is a failure to begin with, right? Totally. One of the things that I always say about intermittent fasting is you have to eat at least one meal to full, otherwise your body thinks it's starving. And right. that's exactly what happened in this study. Comment on it. Yeah, my, my initial thoughts are like, well, what are they measuring for? What are the metrics here? Are we looking at uh, gut health and sleep quality and mental health? And all they were of only things? looking at weight loss. Only no. weight loss. Yeah. So, I mean, if you think about if you're constant, so like you're in a calorie deficit and then you're going to add time restricted eating on top of it. I mean, my thought immediately I go to thyroid production. Your thyroid is going to be stressed out like crazy because it's going to send starvation, which is going to slow the thyroid, which is going to put you in a really bad place in terms of metabolic speed. Not to mention like the people who were eating in the, that all throughout the day. I don't know. I mean, for me, I, so I intermittent fast pretty much every day. I don't mean to, I'm not like, okay, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'm honestly just trying to cut my eating off earlier because I want my body to repair well when I'm sleeping. It's more for circadian rhythm purposes for me. But I also, I like, I get so much joy out of just freaking feeling full at the end of meals. It's become so easy. Because see, that's important though, because it, it signals to your brain, I'm not saying. starving. If exactly. You eat to full. See, everyone is caloric exactly. restriction. By the way, is still how people think you lose weight, right? I know. I if know. you push half your meal away, and you're successful at this, the problem is, is that your body eventually, eventually, goes, "I'm starving. I'm not getting yes. enough," and then yes. it lowers its metabolism to hold on to its precious fat. Like, here's, some, here's something I would like to see. I was just talking to my daughter about this yesterday. We were on a road trip back from St. George, Utah, and I was like. I would love to see a study on how leptin and ghrelin are impacted by you being in a restrictive mindset around food. So just purely from thinking, don't eat as much as I want of that. I can't have as much as I want. How does that impact our satiety oh, signals and our hormones? I mean, there's probably some stuff out there, but I was just thinking about this yesterday. I'm like that thought alone of don't eat as much as you want and not having that moment of Ah, oh, I'm full. That was wonderful. I am enjoying that. It's got to impact the hormone si signaling because our mind, because a awful. mindset, you know, again, the body all it wants to do is survive. And if you're in a mindset of starvation, minimalization, yes. it's going to follow your mindset of I'm starving. And exactly. it does the same thing when you know, it knows it has to survive. It's going to hold on to its precious fat and it's going to lower your metabolism, which then it does that by your thyroid. It does that by your adrenals. It does that. Yep. So you have this hormone de-optimization yep. that's occurring to survive. Yep. And, you know, and again, you know, that study was based on someone who thought that intermittent fasting was working just because of caloric restriction. No, intermittent fasting has benefits because you're getting rid of bad cells via autophagy. But again, I warn people, and I have for years, if you're intermittent fasting, you have to eat at least one meal to full. Otherwise, your body will eventually think it's starving. It's you not going to work long term for you. Yeah. So my thing is, is, you know, studies show eat less to live long. I say eat less often to li live longer. But yeah, better not let ever your body to think it's starving. So you better eat to full. And, you know, yeah. like to your point, there's just a satisfying feeling of eating a meal of full. So yeah, and not to mention you'll be happier. And I, I was doing the over fasting thing for a little while because when you're keto, it's really easy to fast. Oh yeah, you're just <laughs> not hungry. Yeah. And I was doing that. My hair girl one time, she just randomly said to me, this young girl, she's like, "Your hair is so much nicer now that you stop fasting all the time." Because she followed me on social media. I was always doing these 36 hour fasts, like pretty regularly, just because it was like good for me. Yeah. You know. I was, well intentioned. I'm doing an awesome thing for my body, but it was too much stress, you know. And so, yeah, it's ah, you hit it. See, fasting is a stress. Why right. does it work, Doctor Papa? If it's stressful, exercise is a stress. I know I'm reviewing what we just said, but right. fasting works because, like exercise, it's a stress that creates an optimization hormone optimization. Growth hormone goes through the roof when you fast, right? So. Oh. But if you're fasting too much, it's like exercising too much. You're not adapting to it and it yep. becomes a negative. 
That's it. And the feast as is as important as the fast, just like exercisers, the rest exactly. is as important as the exercise. So, Amen. Yeah. So anyway, these are great awesome. conversations that, uh, you know, we need to have more of. Yes. And I, I think your story does it so well, right? Because, you know, I can talk about the science, but people don't care about the science, honestly. They, they just care about the results someone like you got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's, I, I feel like what we're both trying to help people with is like, how do we make this a little easier on ourselves? Because I don't know about you, but I think feast and famine is awesome. It's just so, it's become so easy over time, right? Yeah, I it's just it. so, I feast, so I famine. I feast, I famine. Yeah. It's so, a principle that I've taught. It's now catching on because of people like you that make it easier right? And that's, uh, that's the, the awesome thing. So thank you so much. Well, appreciate it. Yeah. And thank you for all you do and bring to the industry. Thank you for being such an excellent educator. I just had Ben Asadi on my podcast that came out on Friday and he just <laughs> thinks the world of you. He, he called you his Michael Jordan. I'm sure you've heard that before. <laughs> I love so, it. Well, think about his book. Uh, he's, he's keto flex. Is this learned, so it's, similar. He lost all this weight. He had been ended up with the problems, right? Oh, and so yes. You know, he, he he gives me a lot a lot of credit, so I, I appreciate that about Ben. But uh, I'll be on your soon too. So yes, yeah. I can't wait. Thank you so much for coming on, and thank you for having me. I hope this was yeah. beneficial for some people out there. Yeah, get the book, check her out. Amazing. Thank you, Tara. You've been a blessing. Thank you. I want to give thanks to one of our sponsors, Cyto Defend. Look, in a time like this. I think that our immune system and keeping our immune system up right now is more important than ever. I can also tell you that I pay attention to the things that keep my immune system on par and healthy. So, so glad that Cyto Defend is one of our sponsors here on Cell TV. And it's a product that I use, my family uses, and hopefully you'll check it out. And by the way, you can check it out with the link right here below. If you wanna try a free bottle, you can actually get a free bottle, just pay the shipping. And I think you'll reorder after that, but check it out. If you're listening to this podcast and want to access the amazing CytoDefend product Dr. Pompa just mentioned, please visit freeimmunity.com. Again, that's freeimmunity.com. Well, that's it for this week. The materials and content within this podcast are intended as general information only and are not to be considered a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. If you would like to purchase some of the supplements mentioned on this show, please visit the site as seen on chtv.com and use the code CHTV15 for 15% off. Again, that's as seen on chtv.com. Use the code CHTV15 for 15% off. And as always, thanks for listening.